In this demonstrational video, we'll show the entire setup of the audio camera out of box and we'll take some data in a GTI. The audio camera ships with all the necessary components in a waterproof Pelican case. The cable case contains a USB 3.0 cable and power cable connectors for both the laptop and audio camera. The first step to removing the audio camera from the case is to connect the tripod to the base of the audio camera. The audio camera can be mounted on any standard tripod with a quarter 20 bolt at the top. One of the great things about the audio camera is the single cable connection, making setup trivial. The audio camera captures all of its data from all five video cameras at 15 frames a second and all 64 independently sampled, synchronized microphones all over a single USB connector. First step is to connect the USB B cable to the audio camera and its single port. Then connect the A connector to the computer. Next we connect the audio camera's power supply. At this point we're ready to take data but let's first set up the audio camera inside the car. For this data set, we'll place the audio camera on the center console and we'll record some white noise sources that are placed outside of the car. To collect this data inside the car, we're using a power inverter plugged into the cigarette lighter of the car. Once the camera is connected, we can launch the real-time display which gives us a video preview of the view from the audio camera. This will allow us to orient the camera in such a way that we can ensure that all items of interest can be seen. Here you can see the Mercator projection of this real-time display. Now that we're set up, we'll move a white noise source around the windows throughout each one of the joints in the exterior of the car to test the transmitted sound. We'll also turn on the windshield wipers to see how much noise they generate inside the cabin. Here we see the view of the interior of the car from the audio camera's perspective. In this data set, the audio camera is placed in the center console. We can see the front windshield on the right and left split by the Mercator projection. We can see the sunroof, which was slightly cracked in this data set along with the passenger window, slightly open, and the driver's side window. If we want to reorient the scene so that the windshield is in the front, we can simply use this slider. In this data set, a white noise source was moved from the bottom left of the windshield, up across the left edge of the windshield, over the sunroof, finally ending at the back corner of the sunroof. If we look at the top right pane, we see a time domain signal of this white noise source as it was recorded by the audio camera. In the bottom right, we see a spectrogram of the one second selection window from the time domain. Here we can select an arbitrary frequency and time window to compute an audio image on. When we compute an audio image, we're shown a color-coded display of the dB-SPL level in the environment. Here we can see the white noise source was at the bottom left of the windshield, and the amount of transmitted energy was around 53 dB. When we hover over the image, we can see more accurate dB information on the cursor's value in the bottom left pane. So the peak value here is about 52.5 dB-SPL. Now let's move the time selection window to the point where the white noise source was over the sunroof. Now because the sunroof was cracked, we would expect that the sound level transmittance is significantly higher. 
and in fact we can see that 83.3 dBSPL is the level recorded at this point. Additionally, with this microphone icon, we can add virtual microphones to the scene and process a beam-formed signal uh, from each one of these locations. We'll simply left-click in the image to add an arbitrary number of virtual microphones, or right-click to delete existing microphone locations. Once we've selected a region we want to listen to, we can click on Process Beamformers. We're prompted to enter a name, and then time domain signals for each of these specific directions will be computed. Using the center plane, we can play each one of these signals. Additionally, if we're interested in the dynamics of a scene, we can select a longer time frame and compute an audio movie. This will give us a much higher resolution image and show the dynamics of the acoustic field on a very, very fine time scale. Once we've computed a movie, we can use the bottom left panel to play this movie. Here we can see how the field changes and how certain reflections come in and out depending on the instantaneous energy. Using the slider we can slide to any point in the selected region and see what the distribution of energy looks like, along with the dB information. If we find an interesting image we can output this for reporting purposes. Here we can see the data that was captured while the windshield wipers were on in the car. We can see that the data is periodic. Each time the windshield wipers turn over they make a loud broadband sound. In between we can see the period when the windshield wipers are sliding against the window. So let's have a look at one of these times and select frequency and time region associated with the windshield wiper turning over. Here we can see the distribution of energy on the windshield that's caused by this oscillation of the windshield wipers. In this position, the windshield wipers are both in the down position and they're flipping over to return to the upward position. Let's move to the next peak, which would be an upward turnover, and select the range associated with that flip. Here we can see the right windshield wiper is generating the majority of the energy at about 45.7 dBSPL. Interestingly, if we select a region here, we can see an interesting phenomenon as it slides across the window. This particular sound noise is actually leaking and refracting over and through the sunroof where it was cracked and we see the peak energy transmittance is coming from both the back left and back right of the sunroof at 32.8 dBSPL. At the beginning of this recording we can see that the dashboard was actually alarming. If we're interested to see what the distribution of that alarm sound is, we can highlight it and compute an audio image. Here the buzzer is located to the left of the driver's wi window, or the driving wheel. We can also see some additional reflections off the mirrors from this stationary tone.